Hey folks, um, today we are talking about crop health, pests, and disease. And really, we're talking about the plant health. That's why it's the first thing. Um, and I'll get into why that is, why we always want to focus on health as the primary concern when we're worrying about pests and disease. And we will be talking a little bit about plant protection too. So to start off, let's think about the things that plants need to be healthy. They're really not that different from the things that we need for to keep ourselves healthy. So both us and plants need air, sunlight, fresh water, nutrients. Uh, they need enough warmth and they need protection from danger. So just like us, it's really similar things, even though they might need them in different ways. Um, often people make a lot of fuss about pests and disease. Um, so if you go to a garden store, you can see aisles of chemical products for killing every kind of plant pest and plant disease, and you can spend lots of money on them for your garden. But um, the thing above all that is actually going to play the biggest role in stopping pests is your plant's health. Just like you, a plant has an immune system to fight diseases, including hungry insects. When the plant's immune system is compromised, however, um, because of other factors, environmental factors, it's gonna be weaker and more likely to get sick. In fact, there's a lot of really common plant diseases that are associated with nutrient deficiencies. So they literally just need more of certain nutrients to be healthy and then um, they wouldn't get that disease. A healthy plant can repel lots of pests and diseases most of the time. <clears throat> so the health of the plant includes the whole plant and that starts with the roots. So starting with the roots, what do healthy roots need? Well, the whole plant and the roots need healthy, nutrient-rich soil. So you want soil that's rich in nutrients and organic matter. You wanna add some nice compost to it, or you wanna do some cover crops, or you wanna, you wanna build your soil. And we've talked about fertility building in the past. So you want a nice, healthy, rich soil. That's, that's the foundation. In addition, um, plants, in order to be healthy, they need water, moisture, soil moisture, but they also need air in the soil. And uh, when they don't have air, what you get is uh, a situation called waterlogging, which this is an example of waterlogged soils. This is an extreme example. But if the soil is full of water and there's not actually space for air in the soil, then your plants will die in a relatively short period of time, in a couple days. The plants cannot thrive in a waterlogged soil. If it's somewhat waterlogged and their roots aren't getting quite the amount of oxygen that they need, then your plant will be very susceptible to uh, insect damage. Um, and then the opposite of this, of course, is sorry. opposite of this, of course, is not getting enough water. And I think the 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 uh, the stress on your plant is obvious. But again, when a plant isn't getting enough water, it will not only wilt, but if it stays in that state of not having enough water. Uh, eventually bugs will come and start eating the leaves because the plant isn't able to mount its regular defenses. <clears throat> so above ground, plants need a few things. They need sunlight and they need protection. So again, when your plants are unhealthy, this is what's going to start happening. Uh, this is an example of spinach plants that are growing probably with not 
nearly the amount of sunlight they want. Plants growing in the shade um, without enough sun, they tend to grow slowly. Their leaves tend to be more yellow. And a lot of times their stems aren't as strong and they kind of lean over. And maybe their leaves don't get full size and they don't get that nice green uh, look to them. In contrast, there are some spinach plants that are getting plenty of sun. You can see how the different shape of the leaf, how deep green it is, and how upright the plants are. Uh, another thing having to do with sunlight and getting enough of it is spacing. Now these spinach plants are pretty closely spaced. Um, these lettuce plants are maybe too closely packed in. And if your plants are planted too closely together, then they can't get enough light. They can't get the light they need. Um, sometimes you wanna grow your plants really close together like this, and then you're gonna harvest them all young. And that's one way of growing things. But if you want, for instance, your lettuces to get full sized and make heads, um, growing them this close is not the way to do it. The other thing that they need above ground is they need protection from things like strong winds or excessive heat. So wind damage is a real thing. Um, here are a couple examples. That's, uh, that's wind damage. This is actually on a maple tree, but that's what it looks like. If you get really strong winds, they will blow the weaves, leaves around and damage the edges of the leaves, and it literally looks like that. Now, for a gardener, that might not be the biggest deal in the world. You could probably still eat your lettuces if they look like that. For a farmer, you're not gonna be able to sell your, your produce if it looks like that. But it also does stress out the plant. Uh, it, that plant is spending its energy repairing its damaged leaves rather than making new leaves. And then heat uh, can be an issue, a real issue for certain crops such as lettuce. Now, these lettuces, I don't know if you guys know what bolting is. Um, bolting is when the plant sends up a flower stalk and it's basically trying to go to seed. Now with lettuces, it's kind of the end of your lettuce plant because it, the leaves are gonna get real bitter and um, the plant is gonna start to flower and go to seed. So, when you're growing lettuce, you actually want to prevent it from that. Lettuce is one of the plants that does a little bit better in the shade than other plants. And if it gets too hot, uh, gets too much heat, um, then, then it can, it'll bolt and then you can lose your lettuce crop before you ever get to eat it. <clears throat> now, another thing is protection from herbivores. So there are some big animals like deer and rabbits, and they can eat your whole garden in a day uh, if you're unlucky and if you don't provide protection. So they need to be kept out with the proper fencing. So what we use at the front garden, this isn't a picture of that, but this is a similar kind of fencing. This is called field fencing. Um, it, you might not be able to see it in the picture, but the, the squares in the fence get smaller towards the bottom and that's supposed to keep smaller animals from getting in and then there's a couple runs of barbed wire in this case we don't use barbed wire for the deer we just use uh, smooth wire but it just keeps them from being able to jump over the fence and that does a great job of keeping the deer out um, we also do a run of chicken wire near the bottom of the fence if there's rabbit pressure so if there's rabbits in your area you might want to think about uh, laying a, a short stretch, maybe a two foot wide stretch at the very bottom of your fence to keep the rabbits from getting through. Because on this, on uh, this fence, a lot of times they can still jump through the middle runs. They'll just jump over those smaller holes in the bottom. So fencing in your garden, that's important too. Uh, another thing with plant health is some fruiting plants, including cucumbers and squashes, they need pollinators like bees in order to make produce. 
And this is something that some people don't realize. They say, why is my cucumber plant not making cucumbers? Or why is my squash not making squash? Well, it might be because um, you only have one plant and they can't cross pollinate, or maybe because you don't have any bees or pollinators in your area. That can be a simple fix. Okay, now, even when you have healthy plants, there are still some pests that are happy to help themselves to all of the beautiful produce that you're growing in your garden. Around here, the big one is slugs. Uh, and then wireworms also can be pretty relentless. So I hope you guys all know what slugs look like. There are natural ways of dealing with them. You can collect them and salt them. You can collect them and just take them off of your, out of your garden and put them somewhere far away where it'll take them a long time to return. You can walk through with a shovel and just chop them in half. Um, or you can use, there are some natural products um, that, uh, Sluggo is the one that I know. It's uh, iron phosphate. So it actually provides some phosphorus for your soil. So it's, it's a, a nutrient, but the slugs eat it and it uh, messes with their digestive system and they die. And uh, that's a safe and effective way of dealing with slugs, but I usually use it in combination with uh, capturing them and killing them. Because they, especially if you live next to the forest or you have unkept weedy areas near your garden, you're going to have slugs. And then another one that's really common around here is wireworms. Some of you might know them. That's a corn seed in the middle to give you a size reference these guys are pretty small they're usually an inch or less long and they're really tough and wiry that's why they're called wire worms they are actually not a real worm they're a larva of the click beetle and they will eat lots of different crops they will burrow into the roots of lots of your different crops and it's uh it's pretty heartbreaking when you plant things and you're very hopeful and then all of a sudden they wilt and die and then you pull them up only to find one of these guys eating the root. Um, you can actually just break them in half if you find them in the soil uh, but they reside in grass. They, they'll live usually feeding off the roots of grass so if you have if you've had grass and now you're establishing a new garden, that's usually when you'll have a big wire worm problem. If you keep your garden relatively weeded and you've been gardening there for a couple years, usually wire worms aren't much of a problem. Um, and then beyond this, there's some more wire worms. Beyond this, there's a whole bunch of other pests that can show up in your garden. Again, a lot of these will, will be worse in, um, when your plants aren't healthy. So this is a little article from ThoughtCo on the 12 worst vegetable garden pests. There's the Colorado potato beetle. This article has lots of descriptions um, and information about each of these pests. That's the cabbage looper bronze cutworm and other cutworms, the bean leaf beetle, and so on. Aphids is a big one. Um, this is one of the most common garden pests. And also a very easy indicator that there's probably something that is not quite he fully healthy about your plant if you're getting aphids. This isn't the best picture of aphids. Um, I'm going to assign you guys uh, this article and have you summarize one of these pests later on. Uh, here are some better pictures of aphids. Now aphids can come in different colors. It depends on their life cycle and what they're eating and a few other factors. Sometimes they are light green like this. Sometimes they are whitish or powdery grayish like this and then sometimes they're almost black. 
be real dark. And there is a ladybug eating some aphids. Okay, now aphids, they suck the juices out of your plant, but again, they usually show up on, on less healthy plants. Uh, so the last thing I wanna talk about is beneficial insects, okay? Beneficial insects like ladybugs, they can be encouraged in the garden and help you control the pests. Now, a lot of people know that ladybugs are good in the garden, but you might not know why. And the main reason why is because they are voracious consumers of these garden pests, of aphids. Um, here is another ThoughtCo article on the four uh, stages of the ladybug life cycle. So you might not know the other stages of the ladybug life cycle. Here's what they look like as eggs. This is the larval stage. Now this is actually the important stage because this is the stage when they do most of their eating. And by eating, I mean eating aphids. Um, so this is actually the stage you wanna recognize this bug not hurt it, protect it. Don't try to get it out of your garden. You want these guys. They look kind of like an armored uh, car or like an alligator or something. Uh, these guys are your friends. Those are larval ladybugs. And then after the larval, they go into a pupa stage. And then when they come out, that's when they're the familiar adult ladybug. But these guys don't eat nearly as many aphids as the other ones. These guys, their main purpose is to fly around and uh, uh, mate, they mate, and then they'll go lay eggs. But it's really this larval stage, these guys that are your friends in the garden and eating all the aphids. Okay, so to review, when we're thinking about pests and disease, we really want to think about just a few things. One, you want your, your soil to be healthy and rich in nutrients and organic matter. That's the, the foundation. Your plants need enough water, but not too much water, not where they're waterlogged, because either not enough water or too much water, both of those can be a problem. Third thing you need is you need light, right? Your plants need light and for many vegetables, the more the better. Now that's not all vegetables. We talked about uh, we talked about uh, lettuces needing uh, a little bit less sunlight, maybe than other vegetables. Fourth thing, your plants need protection from herbivores, so you need some kind of fence if you have deer and rabbits around. And the fifth is, if you do have pests still. You can battle them with hand-to-hand -hand combat, like we talked about, um, or safe and effective things, uh, not chemicals. And you can invite those beneficial allies to help you fight the pests that you do have. All right, I hope this was uh, helpful for you guys, and I'll see you later.